Welcome to the home of Jerry and John Willis here in Chillum, within the Kingswood Benefice and Westbridge Deanery. I'm John, I'm Church Warden here in Chillum. And I'm Jerry, a reader in the Benefice and Deanery. We have here one of our dinner plates. It's part of a set built up over many years by John's parents. In the next few minutes, we will be giving thanks for the food we have and praying for those who don't have enough. Here in Chillum, we are trying to ensure no one is left feeling hungry or isolated during these difficult times. Locally, we're blessed with a post office and a farm shop which are managing to stay open and there are volunteers to take food to the housebound. Elsewhere in the benefice there are local groups making sure that no one is going hungry. As Jerry and I were thinking about this theme of being thankful for what we have, of doing all we can for those who don't have enough, we were reminded of our Easter pilgrim exploration of the Lord's Prayer, of the line that does not say give us our bread, but give us today our daily bread. We ask for sufficient only, and sufficient for this day only. Do we really mean that? Think back to those empty supermarket shelves, to toilet rolls. What about searching online and finding no delivery slots for weeks? And remember, this should surely also apply to material possessions especially in a world where we are becoming more aware of the need to care for our finite resources. So, with these thoughts and a deep sense of gratitude, let us pray. Bountiful God, we thank you for our daily bread, for our full plate, for all that we have to sustain life physically and spiritually. We pray that we would have the faith and the trust in your grace to enable us to say with confidence, give us today our daily bread. We thank you for all who support us in these difficult days. Above all, we thank you that in Jesus we have the reassurance of your love for us and for all mankind. Amen. Amen. In our intercessions, we'll be thinking particularly of those who do not have sufficient food, locally, nationally and internationally. Heavenly Father, whose Son came to show us the goodness of your provision, we pray for those for whom hunger is a crippling, life-threatening danger. We ask for wisdom for the leaders and experts tackling hunger that they would be willing and able to make progress in identifying ways to combat food scarcity. We pray for our food banks, locally and nationally, that under our present difficult conditions, they may be able to continue to serve those in desperate need. Please bless and sustain all who are continuing to work in the food banks, that they may be kept safe and receive enough food to continue the work they are doing in your name. We praise for those locally who have too little to eat or who are worried about the future. We ask you to remind us that Christ has no body now on earth but ours, no hands but ours, no feet but ours, and help us to use all that we have in your name. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our theme for this year's Day of Prayer and Pilgrimage is Listening on the Way. As this video ends, why not spend a few minutes listening to God? As you look at your own plate, what comes to mind? What is God saying to you about his generosity and provision? We'd love to know what you've heard, so please write or draw your thoughts on a piece of paper. Put it on your plate and take a photo of it and send it to us. You can email it to prayers at diocant.org or post it to at Canterbury Dio on Twitter, at Diocese of Canterbury on Instagram 
or of the Diocese of Canterbury Facebook page.
welcome to this pilgrimage in everyday objects. My name is Emma Pennington and I'm a member of the Canterbury Deanery and also canon here at Canterbury Cathedral. We've come to that stage in our pilgrimage when we come to the everyday object of a cushion. And I want to show you this cushion because this is very special in mine and Smudge's life. Every morning, or invariably every morning, when I come down to work, I can't see this cushion because Smudge here is usually sitting on it. It's literally his favourite place to sit and I think he's going to jump now. As you can see, it's not a particularly nice cushion, but it's covered, it's covered in fur. And I have the horrible task of before I can get on with my work, actually having to move him gently somewhere else. When I was given this cushion to think about, it reminded me, it really made me think about Smudge and this everyday cushion that I see every morning. It made me realise that cushions are so often associated with welcome and hospitality. When we have friends or guests come, we put them in the best chair the nicest cushion, the most comfortable place. But also when we invite people into our homes, into our lives and into our hearts, we also have to make room for them. The rule of St Benedict says, welcome every guest as if they were Christ. Well, at the moment with this lockdown, sadly, we can't welcome our friends and our families into our homes. But on this pilgrimage, we can remember to invite Christ once again into our lives. To remember that he's already here, but to intentionally open ourselves up to his presence here with us and within us. And that requires us to be silent, to put aside some of our own agendas and to listen to what he may be saying to us in our lives today. So in our prayer of thanksgiving, we'd like to give thanks for all our families and our friends who make up our wonderful mixture of lives and for all those who come to this place, seeking God, seeking stillness, for our visit staff, and for all those who do indeed welcome them as if they were Christ. And we ask Christ to help us to open our hearts, giving thanks that he comes to us in our times of joy and in our times of hard times and in sorrow. So let us now pray for the needs of the world, praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ in this Canterbury Deanery, praying for the clergy here at the Cathedral, pray for all who open their hearts and their lives to others, Christ asks us to welcome the stranger as if we would welcome him. So we pray particularly at this time for all those strangers who seek to find a home, who seek hospitality and welcome in our nation. We pray that we may have grace to allow them to share in our lives, to allow them a space into our hearts. And we gather all our prayers and our thoughts into one with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. 
Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. The theme this year of our Diocesan Day of Prayer is listening on the way. So I invite you now just to take your cushion wherever you are in the house and just wonder and listen and open your heart to Christ and wait and see what he has to say to you for he has something very special he wants to say to you which is only just for you. We at the diocese would love to hear your special word from Christ. So please, if you feel you are able to or would like to, then please email us at diocant and also maybe on the Twitter. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your pilgrimage in Everyday Objects.
My name is Simon Young and I am an Associate Priest and Chaplain for Mission working in the Sittingbourne Deanery. I have here a photograph in a nice frame. It's 12 years old, this photo. It shows my great aunt um, who died earlier this year at the age of 99 and my pregnant wife and there's me holding my son at a family a wedding. Over the next few minutes, we're going to be giving thanks for family and friends and asking God to deepen and strengthen our relationships. Jesus looked at those who sat around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. In Christ, God has adopted us into his family. Now God is our Father, Jesus our elder brother, and every Christian our sister or brother. And when Jesus is at the centre, every relationship is blessed and strengthened. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for those who have loved and nurtured us, our own parents and grandparents, our aunts and uncles, the parents of friends. We thank you for those with whom we have grown up and explored the world, our brothers and sisters, our cousins and childhood friends. We thank you for friends of adulthood and for the ways they share our joys and sorrows and enrich our lives. We thank you for adopting us into your family and for giving us countless brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Holy Lord, we pray your blessing upon our churches that they would be living fellowships of the Holy Spirit, where people of every age and background may discover true friendship. We pray your blessing upon our families, where there is estrangement, bring your peace. Where relationships are buckling under strain, bring your strength and healing. We pray especially your blessing upon the young. May our work with children and youth prosper through this pandemic and into the future. That children and young people would put down strong roots of faith and prayer in the fellowship of the church. We ask this in the name of our Lord, our Saviour and Brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our theme for this year's Day of Prayer and Pilgrimage is Listening on the Way. As this video ends, why not spend a few minutes listening to God? As you look at your own photo frame, what comes to your mind? What is God saying to you about friends and family? We'd love to know what you've heard God say, and we'd love to see what your photo frame is like. So please write or draw your thoughts on a piece of paper, put it in the frame and take a photo, then send it to us. You can email it to prayers at diocant.org or post it to at Canterbury Dio on Twitter, at Diocese of Canterbury on Instagram, or the Diocese of Canterbury Facebook page. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Chris Hodgkins, Assistant Area Dean from the Tenterden and Romney Deanery. I serve two rural parishes and I'm also our diocesan rural business chaplain. This is one of my wife's courgette plants and for the next couple of minutes we're looking at care for the creation. To grow well, a plant needs to have a good root system and good quality soil. In the parable of the sower, Jesus tells us that the seed that fell in the good soil grew well and produced fruit a hundredfold. It had a good root system. It is the roots of the plant that suck up nutrients and water to feed the whole plant and make it healthy. When I was studying agronomy at Agricultural College, I remember our lecturer telling us that a weed is anything growing in the wrong place. This courgette plant could easily have been called a weed as it started life growing in the wrong place. It could have been thrown out and put on the compost heap. Then the little fruit, the courgette, wouldn't have grown. Instead, Julie has potted it on and nurtured it and it has borne fruit though not a hundredfold. God created the heavens and the earth, the seas, rivers and lakes, the fields, mountains, moors, deserts and forests. He created fish, birds, animals, insects and reptiles. He created us to be stewards of it all and he saw that it was good. A Jewish prayer. And God saw everything that he had made and found it very good. And he said, this is a beautiful world that I have given you. Take good care of it. Do not ruin it. It is said, before the world was created, the Holy One kept creating worlds and destroying them. Finally, he created this one and was satisfied. He said to Adam, this is the last world I shall make. I place it in your hands, hold it in trust. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of your creation, the warmth of the sun, the song of the bird, the scent of the flower. We thank you that the world you created gives us all that we need to live, food, power and shelter. Bless you, Father, for the diversity of creation seen here in our benefice and county. Sheep on the marsh, orchards, pasture, arable and dairy. We ask your blessing on our farmers as they produce food for us in an ever-changing political and natural climate. We are sorry for not being good stewards of your creation when you place this world into our hands to hold in trust for future generations. We have taken too much from the earth for our own comfort and greed. The soil is thin and poisoned. There is little health in it. We pray that our children and their children may be better stewards of the gift you have given us. Amen. Our theme for this year's Day of Prayer and Pilgrimage is Listening on the Way. As this video ends, why not spend a few minutes listening to God? Look at a plant in your house or garden. What comes to your mind? What is God saying to you about care for God's creation? We'd love to know what you've heard God say and we'd love to see your plant. So please write or draw your thoughts on a piece of paper. Prop them by the plant or in the plant 
and take a photo. Then send it to us. You can email it to prayers at diocant.org or post it to at Canterbury Dio on Twitter, at Diocese of Canterbury on Instagram or the Diocese of Canterbury Facebook page.